Hi guys, happy spirit week. I checked my mail on Friday to find a book on sea otters from Jackson and it was the best surprise ever. So I thought I would read you an extra read aloud today. This book called What If There Were No Sea Otters? What if There Were No Sea Otters, a book about the ocean ecosystem by Suzanne Slade, illustrated by Carol Schwartz. Thank you, Jackson. Sea otters know how to have fun. Found in the northern Pacific Ocean, these furry mammals love to tumble and twirl in the water. Sea otters live in kelp forests near the shore, along with colorful fish, crabs, clams, and sea urchins. All living things in the ocean ecosystem depend on each other for food. Plants and animals are connected to one another in a food chain. There are lots of different food chains in the ocean ecosystem. The sea otter belongs to more than one. When many food chains connect, they make a food web. Ooh. Look at all those different arrows of which animals eat the others. Sea otters are big eaters. One adult Adult otter can munch as much as 25 pounds of food a day. Sea otters enjoy all sorts of tasty treats, including fish, snails, and mussels, but a sea otter's favorite meal is sea urchins. It's critical. Sea urchins are round, spiny animals. They generally live near the shore, where the water is shallow. Tiny tube feet help them hold on to rocks. Sharks and killer whales hunt sea otters, but people are the biggest danger. Sea otters get tangled in fishing nets. They're hit by speeding boats. Litter and oil spills turn the animals' watery homes into garbage dumps. As a result, sea otters have already disappeared from some areas, and those areas have changed for the worse. It's critical. A ship called the Exxon Valdez Des spilled 11 tons of oil off the coast of Alaska in 1989. This spell killed thousands of the sea otters. What would happen if sea otters became extinct, like the dinosaurs? Without hungry otters to dine on them, sea urchin populations would start to grow out of control. So there would be so many sea urchins. It's critical. Sometimes a plant or animal species is so important that without it, many other species could become extinct. It's called a keystone species. Sea otters are a keystone species. Keystone species help make sure an ecosystem has many types of life in it. Tasty kelp leaves and algae make the perfect meal for sea urchins, but the sea urchins would eat faster than plants could grow. Soon, sea urchins would gobble up nearly all plant life near the shore. Kelp is a sea plant that uses sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to make its own food. All plants do this. The food making process is called photosynthesis. Sea urchins aren't the only animals that eat plants. Fish, crabs, and snails do too but before long they would be in danger. They wouldn't be able to find enough food. And plants aren't just food. Kelp forests make great hideouts. Small animals hide in the kelp to escape big animals that may eat them. Some fish lay eggs in the kelp and raise their young there. Others use groups of plants as markers to find their way. Without plants, many fish and other sea animals wouldn't survive. Octopuses and sharks don't eat plants, but they eat fish and crabs, and fish and crabs rely on plants for survival. If plants disappear, so do large sea animals. Sea stars also eat sea urchins, but they don't eat nearly as many as sea otters do. Sea stars cannot help the urchin population keep oh, sea stars cannot keep the urchin population under control by themselves. So they need the sea otters' help. What was, 
Once a place filled with many kinds of life now looks very different. No sea otters gliding through leafy kelp forests. No clusters of clams on the ocean floor. No crabs clicking their claws. No graceful, colorful fish. Just lots of sea stars and hungry sea urchins. Ocean ecosystems where sea otters have disappeared are called urchin barrens. Barrens are overcrowded with sea urchins and sea stars and have a little plant life. So what would happen if sea otters became extinct? A lot. One small change, such as the loss of sea otters, can make a big difference in the lives of countless plants and animals. That's why it's so important to take care of our ocean ecosystem. Thanks to caring people around the world, more than 90,000 sea otters now splash in the Northern Pacific, and more sea otters mean stronger food chains in our oceans. So the key down here on this map, that pink or coral color, says where sea otters have already disappeared. And the green area is where the sea otters live now. Hunting sea otters is against the law in most places. Special laws also help reduce pollution in our oceans. Wildlife teams are reintroducing sea otters to areas where they once lived. These otter families are doing well and having new pups. Oh, I know that sea otter babies are called pups. Ocean animals in danger. The following animal populations are in danger of becoming extinct if nothing is done to protect them. A hawksbill turtle, a sawback angel shark, a flapper skate, Chinese um, bahaba fish, Harrison's deep sea dogfish, and southern bluefin tuna. How to help keep our oceans healthy. Take shorter showers and turn off the faucet while you brush your teeth. Saving water helps keep our lakes and oceans cleaner. It also leaves more water for fish and other wild animals and plants. Don't litter. Trash can kill all sorts of ocean animals. It can get caught around whales' tails and sea lions' necks. Tiny pieces of plastic may get stuck inside the stomachs of seabirds and turtles. Don't pour harmful soaps or chemicals into storm drains. Storm drains lead to canals or rivers, and whatever enters a river will one day reach the ocean. Ride your bike or walk instead of taking a car. Cars burn gas, a fuel made from oil. By saving gas, less oil needs to be shipped across oceans, reducing the chance of spills. Join a wildlife group near you. Groups may have local cleanup days or other events where you can help protect the environment. You can also join a national group, such as the World Wildlife Fund, or raise money to adopt an at-risk animal. And because we know that this was a nonfiction book that gave us information about sea otters, there is a glossary of some important words. And then it gives you some more books to read if you want to learn more about sea otters. And then there are some internet sites. And an index. So we can go back and look at pages. If we want to reread about sea stars, we can go to page 17 and 19. And then there are more books in the chain, Food Chain Reaction series. The end.